Hey everyone, happy iPad Pro week. So I know people have been going nuts over the new iPad Pros that were officially released this week. And I remember how excited I was when I got my first iPad Pro last year. So I thought it would be a perfect time to make a what's on my iPad Pro video just to show you how versatile this device is and what it can be used for. So real quick before we get started, I just want to give you some context. I am a university student and I use my iPad Pro every single day for really long periods of time too. So I don't just use it for like an hour or two, I use it for at least four or five hours every day, either working, which is the majority of the time, or even recently a lot of media consumption. So reading, Netflix, watching YouTube, that kind of stuff. So let's just get right into it and see what I have on my iPad. So I think the last time I did this, I didn't have iOS 12, obviously, because it was a year ago. So or a little bit more than a year ago. So let's just look at the bottom here. So I have my dock down here. So these are the apps on the left you can see that these are my most used apps. So these are the apps that I want to have really easy access to at all times. So Safari is a huge one. It's, it's a great web browser for the iPad. Then we have the Mail app, which I use all the time. So the iPad is really good for checking email. Then next to that, we have the Settings app, which is always good to have ready and available for you. Then we have the Messages app, which admittedly I do use more than I probably should in class. And then next to that, we have my note-taking app of choice, which is Notability. So this is the main powerhouse of my iPad, essentially, and I'll get more into that later on. Then to the right of that, we have the most recently used app. So these are apps I just opened really recently. It doesn't necessarily mean I use them the most, but the iOS 12 basically puts these in for you. And you can disable this as well, but I like it. So Gmail is something that I just opened. Then we have Outlook. So you can see I do a lot of email on my iPad. Then this app all the way on the right. So this is an anatomy app. It's actually the free version. And I just had opened it up right before I did this video because I was curious to see why I had this. Because it's not the free, it's not the full version, it's the free version, so you can't do much with it. But it is cool if you get the full version. It has some really, really powerful tools. So let's go from the top. So this is the first page of my home screen. And I call this the boring page. So this basically has a lot of the stock apps and you know things that I'm not really using all the time. So you have the camera app, which I don't use ever really. I don't use it for any video recording because my phone has a better camera. And sometimes you can use it for FaceTime, and it's, it's a pretty good front-facing camera, so that's nice. Then you have Apple Maps, which is co almost completely pointless since I don't have the cellular version, but it's there if you need it. Then you have the Clock app, which is a clock. <laughs> then you have Photo Booth, which is really funny. I didn't even know I had this app until I was about to make this video. Then we have the Calendar app, which I actually have recently started using a lot. So let me, let's get into this right here. So at first glance, the calendar looks really cluttered and everything, but I can show you something real quick. So if I click on the calendars, you can actually see that I have a whole bunch of different calendars here. So I have school and exam separate. So what I usually do is I usually know my schedule by memory. So I can just click that off and then I can just see when I have an exam. So today's the ninth. You can see here, yes, I had two exams today. So that's what those green dots are. And then you can click on them to see what it opens. And then you can also go around and see when my Thanksgiving break is. And then you can see when I have my next exam, which is December 5th. Looks like in behavioral ecology. And then right after that is my biochem exam. So it's really neat. It's a really great way to keep track of your exams. And then I do have the school feature, which just gives you my schedule, which I, I like I said, I don't need it because I memorized it by now. But it is good to see just to make sure in case you want to schedule something and you're not entirely sure what times you are available or you just want to double check. So that's always really fun to use. And it's actually a really useful tool that I haven't used previously. I just started that this year and I'm loving it. So that's the calendar app. So actually something really useful. And if you guys have any recommendations for other calendar apps, let me know. I think it's a, a really powerful tool that I might want to look into a little bit more. But I've just been using the stock Apple one because it syncs all across your devices. Then you have the context app. I'm not going to open that because it has a lot of my friends and stuff on it. And it's just, you know, context. Then you have home. So this is for home kit. I don't have any home kit enabled devices at all. I'm not really a smart home user. I don't really think smart homes are that great personally. Maybe it'll take off more. I actually find it a little bit creepy sometimes. So I haven't really got into that yet. Then we have my notes app. So I actually use the notes app more for taking quick notes and not really taking extensive detailed notes. So like it, it, I treat the notes app like it's a scrap of paper or it's like a sticky note where I just jot something down real quick and then I usually end up erasing it like 
within the, ne within the next few days. There are much better word processors out there if you want to type stuff, and much better note-taking apps if you really want to take notes seriously. But if you don't need to do either of those, then I think the Notes app is perfect, which I'm sure most of you guys are already familiar with if you have an iPhone. Then we have reminders. This is something else that I don't really use. So I have my two of my friends' birthdays here, but like that's all I've really used for my reminders app. I've never found it too useful. I think the calendar is more useful. So I always just left the reminders as it is. Then we have the iTunes store, which you guys know what that is, and the app store, which you guys also should know what that is. Then we have the news app here, which is actually something I have been using recently just to check some headlines. But believe it or not, YouTube is actually, whenever they show breaking news clips, that's actually been a pretty useful source in the in recent months. So that's what I use a lot of the time. But it does have some more in-depth articles if you are wanting to look at something. So there is the news app. So I would use, I use this I think like once a week maybe. I get news from other sources. Then we have the stocks app, which I don't actually do any stocks. I probably should, but I'm not into that yet. So I don't really have a need for it. And it is here though, because that's something that they introduced in iOS 12. Then we have the podcast app, which I don't use on my iPad, but I do use on my phone. Then we have iBooks. So I actually, I've been using iBooks lately just because it syncs really seamlessly across all my devices, my Apple devices. And you can see here, so I am, I'm in landscape mode, but the, the book is in portrait orientation. And that's because this isn't a book that I purchased. So this is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I never purchased the ebook versions because I have the paperback versions, but I don't have them with me in college. So what I did was I actually found PDFs of them online, which I know it's bad. I shouldn't be reading this illegally, but they were online in PDF form. So I just downloaded them and put them on my iPad. So even though it, it is a little bit annoying that it is in portrait mode, in portrait orientation when your iPad is in landscape mode, it's usually fine because I can just always flip it and read it in portrait mode. It, that's usually works okay. But if I do need to keep it in landscape mode, it's really not that big of a deal to read it this way either. So I've been using iBooks for that. iTunes U, I don't use at all. Find Friends, I don't use at all. I always thought that was kind of creepy too, to be able to stalk your friends whenever you want. But I can also see the benefits of that, so I won't judge if you do use it. Find iPhone, obviously, is a great app. You don't use it, hopefully, that often because you know where your devices are. But that is also there. Then we have the FaceTime app, which I won't open because I think it'll shut down the screen recording. So we'll leave that be. But you guys know what FaceTime is. Then we have voice memos, which is awesome. So this is great that this was added to the iPad now. And it's also on the Mac as well. So I love voice memos. I think it's a long time coming. And I'm super happy that we can use it now. Obviously, I haven't used it here yet. And you can see I do all my voiceovers when I do voiceovers in the voice memos app just because my iPhone just has an amazing microphone that I never actually realized until I started doing voice voiceovers and actually the iPad also has a really good microphone so that's funny I never really realized that either but I could be doing voiceovers on my iPad as well and maybe I will start then we can swipe right so this is where all the good stuff is so first we have photos so I do take I, I don't take photos with my iPad, but it is great that you can view your photos because I have iCloud Photo Library. I believe that's what they're calling it now. They've used so many different names for their photos, their cloud storage of photos. But I do use the iCloud version of that, so all your photos are across all your devices. It's pretty seamless, and this way I can take photos from my iPhone and directly move it to my Mac with no problems. Then we have Facebook, which I haven't used in ages. I don't use Facebook that often. Messenger, which is good to have if you need to contact people. Flappy Bird, which is just funny, I think, that I still have Flappy Bird on my device. I don't know if I'll ever delete it because it was just such a funny game that was so popular back so many years ago. I think that was in 2015. I don't even remember, but it was. I think I always find it funny to see. Then we have the Tips app, which I'm not going to go over. The Measure app, which is, you know, just measuring things. New in iOS 12. It's actually pretty cool, but I don't use it that often either. Airport utility, I have, well, at home we had, or we, I guess they, my parents still have airport routers, wireless routers, so it's really easy to control from your iOS device, so I usually do it on my phone, but you can really troubleshoot things and update it, it's really useful to have, and I think it's one of the best wireless routers, if not the best wireless router I've ever used, and I think my parents agree, so that's awesome, I wish they still made them, but you can still buy them. Then we have the Comic Flow app. So I used to read a lot of comics, and I actually haven't read comics in a in quite a while. I think maybe a, a, a year or two now. But comics, I've I, I always loved comics, and they were 
great. And I used to find PDFs of them and then load them onto Comic Flow. But I don't do that anymore, so I might actually delete that app soon. Then we have the Wustel app, so that's for my school. Bank of America, yeah. I have to check my balance every once in a while, but I honestly don't use it on my iPad that much. Then we get into the folder. So this is where most of the good stuff happens. So folders. So entertainment. I have Netflix. Hulu, actually, I don't use and I don't have, uh, but I tried it once, I think. So Netflix, obviously, is a great to have Netflix on your iPad. You know, the iPad has such a beautiful screen and it's such a great device to watch content on. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, but you can see what I've been watching here. I actually finished Daredevil Season 3 about a week ago. That was fantastic, and a lot of the shows that Netflix has are usually pretty good, so I love superhero shows. Superhero shows. I love the Marvel superhero shows, those are great. And then they also have the CW superhero shows like Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash, so the old seasons, so that's always fun to watch too. So Netflix, obviously people know what Netflix is, it's such a great app to have, and it's such a perfect device to be watching Netflix on, in my opinion. Then you have YouTube, so, you know, everyone knows what YouTube is, you're watching this video on YouTube right now. Again, it's, it is a pretty useful app to have on your iPad, but I do find myself using my phone a little bit more for YouTube than my iPad. Then we have the Dish Anywhere app, which is, if you have Dish, you can basically watch your recorded TV shows remotely. So I don't have Dish, but my parents did, so I downloaded the app so they could use it when they needed to. And now, obviously, I don't live with them anymore because I'm in college, so... I don't really need that app. I could probably delete that. Then we have the CBS app. So this is great if you want to watch CBS shows. You can usually watch them the day after they air. You will get ads, but it's still cool to have. Same thing with the CW app. So I watched all the CW shows, like the superhero CW shows, like Arrow, The Flash. Uh, actually, those are the only two I've been watching recently. I have to catch up with the other ones. But it is great. You can watch them the very next day that they air. You do get ads, but they're not terrible, right? And you get a really good quality show, meaning like it's in HD. And you're not torrenting it. And you're still watching it legitimately. So I think it's a great idea. And it is a little bit shorter. I think it's only 52 minutes as opposed to an hour. So there are, I think, a little bit less commercials than when you watch it on the app. So that's great. Then recently, this is the DC Universe app. So I know, sorry, if you're not into superheroes, this is a lot of superhero stuff right now. I love superhero and comic books and stuff. So this is the, I've been watching Titans recently, which is, it's not, an, it's not a bad show, but it's not a great show. And then I actually, I've been watching Teen Titans, the animated series, not Teen Titans Go, the, the good Teen Titans. So it's not showing up here right now, but I was, I can promise you I was watching it. So that's really fun to watch as well. And then you also get a lot of comics on here. So that's another reason why I don't need Comic Flow anymore because you actually get free comics. So you do have to pay. It's a subscription-based service, but I really wanted to watch Titans and Young Justice Season 3 when that comes out. So in my opinion, well worth the money. Then we have the TV app. So the TV app is cool because it actually reminds me when I have shows that have that are coming out. So like, um, so Arrow, for example, is a show I watch. It, it airs on Monday nights. And then on Tuesday morning, the, t the TV app sends me a notification saying it's available to watch on the CW. So that's awesome. And then I also have my movies here. You can obviously see what kind of movies I'm into. <laughs> Again, I just, <laughs> I'm a big superhero nerd, so sorry if it's getting a little redundant. But yeah, so these are the movies that I've purchased uh, and I can watch. And these are phenomenal to watch on an iPad. I'm telling you, it is so much fun to watch these, especially when you're on a plane or when you're having to travel it's just so great to watch it on an iPad. So uh, I think it's like a really... Because the iPad is so light too. So it's just really fun to watch. Let me actually show you how much storage... I So I have the 64 gigabyte version of the iPad Pro. So if you were kind of unsure what size you should get, honestly, I think 64 gigabytes is plenty for most people. I think obviously 128 gigs would be more comfortable. But 64 gigabytes... It's been handling everything I need without any problem. So uh, you can see here, I could delete old conversations from my messages app and save 3.23 gigabytes, or I could not even have music. Like I don't need music on my iPad. I hardly use it, except today. It says I used it today because I just opened it, but I hardly use the, the music app. So I could easily free up 6.6 .6 gigs on the iPad. And you can see I've used only 40, well, 41.6. I guess that's a lot out of the 64. But I still have around like 20 gigs left. So there's still plenty of storage for me to go and use. 
and you can see here photos is taking up a lot and this anatomy this this anatomy app is taking up 1.38 gigs so i could literally delete that right now and save 1.3 gigs of storage so honestly i think that this is completely fine and wait till i show you how many notes i take and how many recordings i have you know this actually is not using up that much storage so if you're not sure i think that you should be fine with 64 gigs Obviously, if you want to be safe, upgrade it. I don't know what Apple has as their next tier now. But if you are unsure, upgrade it. Definitely get the upgraded storage. But honestly, most people, you can see how many apps I've been using. And I'll, you'll see even a lot more of what I use. 64 gigs should be just fine. All right, so that rounds up the entertainment folder. Wow, that was a lot. So Evernote is a note-taking app, again, that I used to use years ago. And I just never ended up deleting it. I kept it. So I don't use it anymore, but it is there if I need it. Scannable is an amazing app that scans documents, and it does a really good job. It doesn't beat a, re a real scanner, but it comes pretty close. So I do like Scannable a lot. I can't open it and show you because, again, it might shut down the screen recording. Then we have the calculator app. So I paid, I think, $2 for this app, and I love this calculator app. I don't know why Apple hasn't put their native calculator app on the iPad, but... I bought this one and it's fantastic. You know, it's just, you can have so many different themes. It's just so easy to use and it's really convenient. So I bought it. it is a, there's a free version, but it has ads, but I was using it so much. I thought I might as well support them and pay for no ads. The, the ads weren't bothering me at all. So analytics, that's for Squarespace. I have a website so I can run analytics on that. Adobe Draw, this is something that I wanted to do. So I have to do some graphic design for a, a part of a business that I run. And I haven't used this actually Ever. I didn't really like it. So I'm not like an actual graphic designer. I just have to do like vectorizing artwork and things like that and man manipulating colors a little bit. So I have to have an illustrator on my computer, but Adobe Draw isn't just something that I personally need on the iPad. But as you can see, I still have it. So see so many useless apps that I have right now that I could easily delete, but I just haven't. So point of sale again. So this is a square app. So you can take payments from the iPad, which is so I use this in our business a lot when we have to take payments with card, with credit card, I can actually open it up and show you what it looks like. So you have a little square reader you can attach into the headphone jack or the the lightning port, and then you can take credit cards. You just swipe them. I'm sure people have, you guys have seen these in small businesses and stuff. So it's a fantastic app, and it's really easy to use, and I can even send invoices to people right from the app. So yeah, that's what I use, and it looks really professional with the Apple Pencil when you have a big client and they need to sign something. So you give them the Apple Pencil and then they sign it on your device and it looks really cool. Then we have Dropbox, which again, I use mainly for the business. This is Box, which I sometimes use with, for my school, but not usually. I had to get the app one time, I think, to open a link that my professor had sent me. So that's why I have Box, but I don't use, bo bo use Box otherwise. Then this is the anatomy app I was talking about, which, like I said, I don't use because it's the free version, but I can show you, actually. It's really cool, even though it is the free version and you can't really do much with it. But you can, like, rotate the skeleton and really see the anatomy of the human body. And you can add connective tissue here, so I can add connective tissue. But obviously, like, these features, like muscular tissue, arterial, all that, like, I can't do that because you have to pay for it. So that's unfortunate. So I'll probably end up deleting that. Then, so for educators out there, if you're trying to buy an iPad Pro for educating or if you're like a professor or a teacher, a high school teacher, you're a middle school teacher, any type of educator, these next few apps I think are really useful. So whiteboard, so whiteboard maybe not so much, but whiteboard is really nice to do, to use if you just need to do a quick math equation or if you're just solving something really quick or need to draw the structure of something really quick. So like if I just needed to draw like uh, a chair confirmer. Oh, I haven't done this in a few months, but I can draw my chair confirmer really quick and then have my axial positions if I really need to do that. But it's just a great way to jot down something really quick that you don't need to keep. So something that's not permanent. Or if you're solving like an algebraic equation, then you can really do that really quickly too. Obviously, you should be able to solve this just fine. But if you need to do something like that, you get the idea. So I think for students and educators, I think this is really useful to have. But a more powerful tool is the Show Me app. So this is these both of these apps are free, by the way. So this app basically you can record your lectures, so you can draw it kind of Khan Academy style, but you can you know show what you need to draw. So if I need to draw the cell, and then I need to label the nucleus here, you know you can you can draw this, and then you can even share it on the Show Me app. 
And then here you can record what you need to do. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can record your lecture and it should trace as you go. So it has, you know, basically everything you need, like if you need a whiteboard, but it's digital. So you can use this in your classroom. You can just sit down at your desk. Actually, my, my middle school, my, my middle school, my high school math teacher used to do this with the Surface Pro and OneNote. And what you can do is you can just, you know, write your equation here for your students to copy down instead of, instead of having to go up to the board and use chalk, which would get your hands all dusty and grimy or sm having to smell expo markers which you know can doesn't have a great smell and that or having to like run out of ink on your markers so you get the idea and then you have you can switch pages like that so it's a really great app i don't use it too often but i think it's fantastic then duet display that you can see here so this is so i can connect my iPad to my Mac. So it's actually connected to my Mac right now. And if I open this up, which I won't do because it'll end the screen recording also, is it will extend my display. So I can actually have two displays on the go. So this actually does cost 20 bucks. The problem with the do it display is it uses a lot of your battery, so your Mac battery. So that's a little bit of an issue. And it's not, it, it has pretty good, it doesn't have that much lag. Almost, almost perfect in that sense. But it does have a little bit of lag. So that can be a little bit annoying at times. And I actually have my external monitor with me, so I don't use Duet Display as much anymore, but I was using it before when I didn't have my monitor with me in my dorm. And then we have Quizlet. I'm sure you guys all know what Quizlet is. If you're a student, you've used this countless times. So I love Quizlet to study for Spanish, but the problem is that you can't hold down the key on the smart keyboard to bring up the accents like you can on Mac OS. So like if you're on Mac OS and you need to hold down the A, you hold it down and then the accent mark will show up above and you can choose what type of accent you want on that character. So the same doesn't hold true on iOS for some reason, at least not on Quizlet. So I don't really use Quizlet anymore because I usually use Quizlet for Spanish. So I use my Mac for Quizlet. Then Slack. So this is what you use if you're working with like your boss, you need to communicate, you can, you know, create projects and do stuff like that. So I'm a grader for organic chemistry, so I need to use Slack for that. Then we have Blackboard. So my my university uses Blackboard and Canvas this year, but we are switching completely to Canvas. So the Blackboard app is pretty much garbage. So you can see here it's an updated and I haven't opened it. I don't think I've ever opened it on my iPad because it's so bad, at least on my iPhone. So if I need to use Blackboard, I'll use the mobile site on the iPad. It's not even the mobile site, actually. I think it's the full site on Safari. Then we have Canvas. So Canvas is actually a really useful app. So Canvas is basically where your teacher, your professor can post all the material that you need. So you can see here, my homework for Monday is listening to this. Okay, so this this doesn't have any PDF documents, but so for, for so we have to read a scientific paper every week. So I can show you the Friday reading we had. So you can see that it has the, the paper that we need to read and he, he's highlighted some things for us. And then what I can do is I can actually send this to Notability I won't do that because I already have it there, but you can send it to Notability and then annotate it and highlight it yourself. So that's a really useful feature. So Canvas is great. The app is great. And I use it all the time, even though I only have one class in Canvas right now. I hope all my classes go to Canvas. Well, they will. But right now, I only have one. So it is what it is. And that's the productivity folder. So let's keep chugging along. So you may or may not know, I do review a lot of note-taking apps. So I've reviewed GoodNotes, NoteShelf 2, and Notability down here. And the next app actually that I was going to review is Notes Plus, but I never got around to it in, before making this video at least. So I will be doing it soon, but I haven't had enough time to use it, I don't think, which is why I didn't review it yet. But you can see here, so this is another note-taking app. It looks really good and it has some really cool features, but I haven't explored all of it yet. So I can't say much about it right now because I don't know much about it. So GoodNotes 4 is an app that I've talked extensively about in other videos, so I don't want to bore you guys with that. And it's not the note taking my note-taking app of choice right now, so that's that. Then we have NoteShelf 2, which is a really cool note-taking app also, and I guess they just updated it. I haven't used it in a while, but whoa! It says your handwriting becomes smoother, faster, and more natural. So just a quick tangent, in my NoteShelf 2 app review, I said that the handwriting did not feel very smooth or natural or fast. So this is the, I guess they listened to many people complaining about this. So I'm really hoping, I'm really happy to try that out soon. Then you can create new notes, I guess with Hey Siri, pin to top. That's actually really cool. And wow, so 
I actually need to go back and use this app more because that's a really, really neat updates they have. It's still not my note-taking app of choice, but you know, it could change if the updates are that good. Then you can see the next few folders are broken up into companies, so Amazon. So my Amazon that's shopping, that's pretty boring. Prime Video, I don't even know why I have that. I don't have Amazon Prime, so I should probably delete that app. Then we have the Kindle app, which I haven't used in a while, but it is cool. So this is this one book I was reading on Kindle. So the Kindle app, I think, is a much nicer reading experience than iBooks, just in general. It's a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use, but the iBooks, iBooks is just easier to sync across all my devices, which is why I put my PDFs in iBooks. So that's why that's like that. And then Comixology. So this is Amazon's Comics app. So you can see I haven't used it in a while either, but I would sign in with my Amazon account, and I actually have quite a few comics on there that I used to read. But again, I don't read comics anymore, so that's left there. Then this is basically Apple's apps that they came with. I don't use like any of these <laughs> at all. And I'll tell you why, except maybe the Files app. So actually the Files app is incredibly useful. You can see on my on my Files app, I'm in my iCloud Drive and the, this is actually on my desktop on my Mac. So I always have access to everything that's on my desktop on my Mac, which is an incredibly useful feature. Oh my gosh, it's so useful. I use this all the time. And if I ever need something from my Mac, I just put it on my desktop real quick. And in a second, it's available for me to download onto my iPad. So this is long overdue. I think it, this Files app has been around for at least a year, but it's an incredibly useful feature. So if you have a Mac and an iPad, oh my gosh, the, the experience between the two is phenomenal. It's really great. Then we have the Microsoft Suite. So actually, this is what I use for word processing and for slides and for any number crunching I have to do. Microsoft Suite is always been top notch and it still is. And the reason why I use this is because my university actually gives this to us for free until at least while we attend. So I do have access to this until I graduate. So let me open up Microsoft Word, for example. I actually, when I need to create study guides for my classes, I definitely go to Microsoft here. Here's a prime example. I go to Microsoft Word hands down every single time on my iPad because it's so much fun to type and create study guides on. It's so easy to use. So what I can do is I have Microsoft Word open here and then I have my notes on the slides or notability notes open on my computer so I can just type what I need to on my iPad and then look at what the information is on my computer. And the reason why I do it on my Mac and I don't do it the other way around is because it's a lot easier to look up information on Google real quick if you need to on a regular computer as opposed to an iPad. So let me just give you a quick example of the type of notes I make. So here we have it. And these pictures I do add actually after. So I screenshot them on my Mac and then since it's all connected with OneDrive, I can just open this document anywhere. It's really hard to explain how convenient it is, but basically I can open this Word document anywhere I want. And it's just a really amazing experience. So if your school or your university offers the Microsoft Word Suite for free, definitely take advantage of it because it's awesome. Then PowerPoint, I don't use that much when you're in college. You don't really make that many presentations. Excel, again, I don't, I'm don't. i not like a math major. I'm a neuroscience major, not a math major, so I don't really use Excel that much, but I do use it once in a while. OneNote is another note-taking app that I reviewed, and it's fine. I, I think it's a good note-taking app, but it's not the best one. And that's one of the main reasons why I don't have a Surface Pro, right? It's not because I necessarily like iOS better than Windows, but it's because the suite of apps are so much better on iOS. I just have, like, I can't, I can't take notes on OneNote. I tried it. It's just not fun. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make you want to take digital notes, in my opinion. So, and I've talked about that extensively too, my OneNote versus Notability videos, so... You could always watch those if you really want, but that, I could go on for a long time. And I've already been going on for so long, so that you, you can trust me when I say I can go on for a long time talking about those two. Then we have my OneDrive app, which again is connected to my university. So I use OneDrive for all my cloud storage that isn't on that I'm not using iCloud for. So I use OneDrive actually for all my school documents and stuff. And I back up my notability notes into OneDrive as well because I get a terabyte. So that's awesome. So you can see here how I have this sorted out. My notability notes, which is great. I can always access them even if I'm on a Windows computer and it doesn't have notability. I can just go to OneDrive and find whatever note I need because it always backs up. 
So you can see the classes I'm planning on taking. I kind of have things planned out. And you can see what requirements I need to meet still. So these are the classes I have to take. So you can see here that I have some of my classes and that I took. So this is actually when I was a sophomore. But basically, I'd create folders and it has all of the, you know, quizzes and lectures that I need to watch. So always accessible. So that's the Microsoft Suite. So I guess I use the Microsoft apps the most. Then we have the Google Suite. So again, like the Apple Suite, I don't really use any of these. I don't use Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides unless our professor forces us to work in a group for some reason. Or, you know, if an organization needs to share a doc with you because you have a lot of people, then I, then I can use this sometimes. Then we have the Hangouts app, which I haven't used in a really long time, but I used to use it all the time. Then we have Google Keep, which is kind of like reminders. Google Photos, which is great, but now that I have iCloud, I pay for iCloud storage now, I pay a dollar a month for that. So I don't really need to use Google, Google Photos, and I don't really take pictures on my iPad anyway. But it is good to see, because all my family backs up to one Google Photos account, so we can all see each other's pictures when we want to. Then we have the Gmail app. So uh, I want to open it and show you what it looks like, but I also it also has some information that I can't really show publicly. So I'm going to have to skip over opening that. But I can tell you, if you used the Gmail app before on iOS, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I personally hate it. I don't think it's that intuitive at all. And when you send emails, like it sends the whole chain of email underneath your message. So if you have a long chain going on, it sends like the whole thing, attachments and all. It's really strange. I don't know if I'm missing something, but I really don't like it. Then you have the Google Drive app, which of course is the cloud storage option offered by Google. Okay, so... Finally, I've been saving the best for last. Let's look at Notability. So as I mentioned before, and I will talk about this a little bit more since I use it a lot, Notability is my go-to app. If we go to Notability here, you can see this is literally all my notes that I have for all my classes. So I'm taking biochemistry right now. So all the lecture notes that uh, we have that she gives us, and then all the problem sets, and then some review things that I wanted to review before the exam. Then you can even hear I have behavioral ecology, same thing. So I actually record my lectures here, and you can see it's an hour 12. I don't know if you can see that up here, but it's an hour and 12 minutes long. And these recordings don't take up that much storage at all. So it's awesome. And I can listen back to them when I'm studying and scroll through them. And you can see as I scroll through them, you see my notes start appearing? That's because Notability tracks what note, what you wrote at what time. That is an amazing feature and I use this all the time when I need to study and it's really really useful because you can't always write down everything the professor is saying and since his slides don't have that much info you really have to pay attention to what he's saying verbally and then this is a good way to listen to that and remember what he said. Then as I mentioned principles of the nervous system so that was the class I was taking on canvas that was on canvas and you can see some of my notes here so some drawings we have and one thing I wanted to point out is I highly recommend buying a keyboard with your iPad Pro. It doesn't have to be the smart keyboard necessarily, but definitely buy some keyboard that's easy to use because you can see here in this lecture, what we were doing was there was so much information on the slides, but we, they were also writing stuff on the board. So I could easily switch between typing on the comfortable keyboard and then I could go back to handwriting to make these diagrams and things like that. So if you... This is why I think it's it's really seamless to switch between the two, and I really recommend getting a keyboard for your iPad Pro if you are a student and you're going to be taking notes. Then I have a religion course that I have to take, which is which I can have. She posts all the readings on Blackboard, and what you can see here is I download the readings onto my iPad. So I mentioned Blackboard before, how I use it on Safari. So I'm on Safari right now, and you can see she posted all the readings we have to do. So I can just easily open this up, and then send this to Notability when I need to. So this is, and then I can highlight it, take notes, do whatever I need to. This is my MCAT. So I, I am trying to take the MCAT in the spring. I actually, I am taking it in the spring. I'm not trying to. I will be taking it in the spring. So I have been studying for it. So you can see I have organized it by subject. So general chemistry, biology, orgo, physics. And then I just have some notes on it really quick of what problems and some equations you can see here. So that's been really useful too. So you can see what apps I use a lot. So like it mentions Notability, I use that a lot. Uh, iBooks, or I guess they just call it books now. I use it because I read a lot. And then Safari, Settings, DC Universe, to watch Titans, Student, Mail, etc. So this is, like I said, mainly used for my productivity, but it is used a lot for reading and relaxing too. So 
it has a lot of purposes and it's a great device. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this gives you some idea of how you can use your recently purchased iPad Pro if you just bought the new one or if it gives you some ideas of how to use your current iPad or iPad Pro as well. But that's all I have today. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was so much fun to make. I will see you in the next one.